What's up, everybody? And today we're checking out Russia's MiG-31 Foxhound, providing to be a threat. No, sorry, proving to be a threat. We're off to a good start. To Ukraine aircraft. This is by Military TV. I will leave a link in the description if you want to watch it without that weird British guy in the corner talking over it. Them boomers in the comments. Who's that guy? I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to fall for that, that trap. And I know it's become a bit of a meme on the channel now of people randomly commenting, who's that guy in the corner? I get it. I get it. You should go look at some of the old comments on the videos. They're actually really funny. It would have been way better without him going on in the corner, without him chatting over it. So much blabbering. <laughs> All right, before we get started, listen. We're so close to half a million subscribers. What we are. As of right now, as of... As I look at the screen, we're at 495.5 thousand. We are so close. We're 4,500 away from getting half a mil, which is crazy. The journey we've come on to get to here is just amazing. Absolutely amazing since the first day. Let me know if you were there when we did... Um, the clean house video that blew up on the channel back in 2021. I think what will happen is when we get to half a million and we do that live stream and I drink a bunch of this mead back here, we'll go back together and watch some of the OG videos, we'll play some games. I think my brother's going to come over and hang out and we'll have some fun. Um, but we'll go back and we'll watch some of them old videos. I think that'd be great. Let me know what you think. Anyway, I'll shut up. Let's pull this up. Let's check out this MiG-31, this Russian aircraft, because I honestly don't know much about it. Um, and I'd like to know a bit more about it, if I'm honest with you, because this seems like... Is this the, the Russia's... Is this the Russia's F-35? Is that what this is? Let's find out. Military In TV. Episode, we're going to take a look at Let's, a Russian supersonic... Before he starts, that's actually a great shot of it. Let's just have a look at it right now. Um, it's got dual engines, which the F-35's just got that one big one, doesn't it, at the back. So the rear of it is more F-22, if you think about it. The front of it, it doesn't look stealthy in any way. That is that even the F, is that even the MiG-31? It doesn't look stealthy at all. It's very rounded. Is that episode, it? We're going to take a look at a Russian supersonic interceptor aircraft, the Mikoyan MiG-31, and see... Whenever I see these square vents on the front, it, it just shouts F-22 to me every time. What's so special about it? Is if that... you're eager to learn more about this topic, stay with us and don't go anywhere. McCoyan MiG-31. I just want to preface this as well. There's a lot of hate um, around the world right now with different countries, whether that's Russia and China. And, and I know we do military content, we specifically do military content um, and we talk always, you know, our country and our allies' country's equipment better than theirs because they're our adversaries, blah, blah, blah. I just want to preface this and also remind people that there are people who live in countries that we see as adversaries, people who live in Russia, people who live in China, all these countries that we see relatively dangerous to us who don't want to fight at all, who are good people and don't want anything to do with all this. I watched a video of a um, person that went to go and live in Russia, and it was just interesting how the amount of people that they spoke to was just like, we don't, like, none, we don't, none of us want to fight. We just want to get on with our lives. And so um, I just want to preface this. Whenever we're talking about, like, Russian aircraft or Chinese or whatever, I'm, I don't want to be, like, picking them apart, being like, we're better than you. We're just looking at equipment here, guys, and it's got nothing to do with the people living in the country. So I just want you to remind you of that because you also, you know, I do look through the comments and you do see quite a bit of, you know, hostility between countries. And I get it. I get it. If a country is threatening your country, you have every right to be on the defense and be like, hell no, we'll blow you up or whatever you want to do. Right. Um, but at the same time, just be aware that there are people like me and you living in these countries that don't deserve that stuff. Don't deserve them words sent to them. All right. They don't deserve that. So just bear that in mind. All right, guys. 
also known as Foxhound by its NATO reporting name. The Mikoyan MiG-31 is a supersonic interceptor aircraft which was built for the Soviet Air Forces. Famous for being one of the fastest combat jets in the world, MiG-31 was designed and manufactured by Mikoyan. Wait, was this the one that... This isn't the one that... It was crazy fast and we didn't know much about it and then one of the Russian guys friggin' decided to fly to a western base and gave the information away. Is that what this one was? A Russian aerospace and defense company headquartered in Moscow. MiG-31 is based on and shares similar elements with the MiG-25 and indeed was made to replace the earlier MiG-25 Foxbat. The Defense Ministry of Russia expects the MiG-31 to be active in service until 2030 and beyond. Ooh, that's a long time. It must be a good aircraft. This statement was confirmed in 2020 when the government released an announcement about extending the service lifetime from 2,500 to 3,500 hours on the existing airframe. Interesting. Interesting. Let's so this is in the sky against Ukraine right now, isn't it? First, take a look at the history of the Mikoyan MiG-31. The Soviet Union's Air Defense Forces VPVO required a number of large interceptors to monitor its vast boundaries during the Cold War. Most light fighters, such as the early MiGs, were not adequate to the task as they lacked the range and speed to quickly climb and intercept supersonic American bombers flying over the Arctic to drop bombs on the Soviet Union. I'm trying to remember what aircraft it was the the guy escaped in. Uh, let me Google it real quick. Russian aircraft. Um, what's it called when someone escapes? I'm just gonna Google it real quick. The Su thirty five. No, that's not it. I don't know what it was. That's not it. MiG-25. The pilot who stole a secret Soviet. It was the MiG-25. So if you remember correctly, that's the one that the West were like, oh my God, look at how crazy fast this aircraft is that the Russians have got. And they were panicking a little bit, and um, one of the Soviet soldiers stole one and flew it away. And we found out that it was basically just, that's all it could do was go fast. Do you remember? MiG-25, that one. The single-seat MiG-25 could fly at high speeds, altitudes, and rates of climb. Nevertheless, it lacked maneuverability at low altitudes and was difficult to fly. The MiG-25's top speed was generally limited to Mach 2.83. Which is fast, by the way. Very fast. Although, with the danger of engine damage, it might reach Mach 3.2 or higher. Ooh. Development of the replacement for MiG-25 started with YE-155MP prototype, which flew on September 16, 1975. Though it shared some similar characteristics with MiG-25, the prototype had a longer fuselage capable of housing the radar operator's cockpit and was designed quite differently. So this, this what we're watching now, the MiG-31, was the replacement for, oh, I'm presuming he's going to get into that, was the replacement for the MiG-25, which is the one that could go crazy fast. So I'm wondering what the speed is of this. This is something that I'm thinking of. A notable of. development at this stage was the MiG-31's advanced radar, with the skill for both lookup and lookdown confrontation, as well as numerous target tracking. Mm. With far more sophisticated weapons, sensors, and enhanced capacity of range, which was almost doubled from the MiG-25, the MiG-31 substituted the Tu-128 as the long-range interceptor serving the Soviet Union since the 1960s. Wow, since the 1960s? The updated capacity of MiG-31 gave the Soviet Union an interceptor with the efficacy to confront the Western intruders comprised of low-flying missiles and bombers at comparably long range. So is this, they're, they're using this right now. It's going to be until 2030 until it gets replaced. 
I'm just I'm I'm trying to just look at it and give my first impressions of this. And when you think about what it's going up against, right? Or what it would like say that Russia kicked off with Europe and NATO got involved, right? I think the aircraft. Let's take away America for a second. Just think of the Eurofighter. Like, just think of that one before we even get into F-22s, F-35s, all the different variants of the F-35s, F-18s, F-16s, all, all of them. All of them. Like, think about that for a second. The MiG-31 began to be serially produced in 1979. Oh, so it's a pretty old. A flock of four MiG-31 interceptors can control an airspace with a total length of 800 to 900 kilometers. And its radar was capable of detecting targets up to a maximum range of 200 kilometers with typical detection width along the front of 225 kilometers. Interesting. I wish it would do... Whenever, if they were doing a video where the, there's an aircraft replacing another one, I wish they did like side-by-side -side comparisons of stats on the screen. That would be really nice to see, wouldn't it? Design-wise, the MiG-31 was expected to fulfill several objectives. First, to intercept cruise missiles as well as the launching aircraft by seizing missile launch range by the quickest possible means. Mm. Second, to safeguard the strategic bombers in long-range missions. Third, detect and attack low-flying cruise missiles, UAVs, and helicopters. Interesting. And lastly, to supply possible air defense in some areas which are not protected by ground-based air defense systems. I mean, it seems like this is, you know... At what point do we really change what a fighter jet can do? I mean, at the end of the day, it should be able to tick a bunch of these boxes already, right? Like, it should be able to, to tick... Detect and attack low-flying cruise missiles, UAVs, and helicopters. Safeguard the strategic box. I just feel like there's a lot of these boxes that should naturally be ticked anyway when you've got a good fighter jet. Am I wrong by saying that? Great the video. The production of MiG-31 ended in 1994. For the first... So it's a, it's a relatively old plane then. It's not new by any means. I thought this... When I went into this video, I was thinking this is like the newest kind of... The dog's bollocks. Do you know what I mean? I thought this was Russia's like golden boy but i guess not batch of production a total of 519 mig 31s including 349 baseline models were produced at the so-called plant between 1976 and 1988. that's a While lot the of planes. final batch of mig 31b variant was produced between 1990 and 1994. in the final phase of production a total of 50 aircraft were acquired by the kazakhstan air force following the fall of the soviet union interesting now, let's see what kind of features the MiG-31 has. Just like its predecessor, MiG-25, MiG-31 is a large twin-engine aircraft with side-mounted intake ramps and shoulder-mounted wings with 2.94 aspect ratio along... Am I, am I okay to say that them intake round, like the, the, the square intake round, they remind me of an F-22 run, really, and truthfully, wasn't the MiG-25 before that and it had them first? So I know the F-22 is like an unbelievable machine, but they weren't the ones that did this first. Um, but for some reason, because I feel like the F-22 is like the ultimate plane, right? The ultimate aircraft. Whenever I see them square intakes, I just think of that for some reason. With two vertical tail fins. Thanks to its highly aerodynamic and streamlined body, MiG-31 is skilled when it comes to flying with high speeds at relatively low altitude. However, it doesn't hamper the aircraft from tracking multiple targets concomitantly at high altitudes, as the design allows MiG-31 to do so. Hmm. Whoa, what a beautiful view. On the other hand, combined materials like welded nickel steel, titanium, aluminum alloy, and composites made up the aircraft's airframe, with each of the materials having a different portion of percentage. Hmm. It does look, it's a big aircraft. You look at the cockpit, it's a big aircraft, this thing. And so the weight of it, I mean, you see the size of the engines, but like the weight of it, it's probably a hefty aircraft, this, isn't it? The, F20, the MiG-25 was a, was a heavy aircraft, and that's why it wasn't able to maneuver that and the fast speed of it. And so I'm wondering, you know, what is the use case of this against something from the West, you know? 
Looking through its cockpit, MiG-31 is complemented with digital avionics such as multifunction displays, MFDs, and liquid crystal displays, LCDs, to help the aircraft keep updated instrument readings and information regarding the radar. Mm. On both the front and back sides of the cockpit, zero ejection seats are installed to allow the pilot to fly at his or her selected height and airspeed. The pilot sits in the front cockpit seat, while the weapon system officer, WSO, sits in the back cockpit seat, supervising radar operations and weapon deployment, reducing the pilot's workload and enhancing efficiency. I mean, yeah. I feel like there's nothing really new there, is there? For the armament, MiG-31 is fitted with four long-range R-33 air-to-air missiles, codenamed AA-9 Amos by NATO. I don't know why. I thought this was going to be like the equivalent to the F-35, but the Russia's equivalent. It's nowhere near, is it? Like, I thought this was like their stealth fighter. It's just not as impressive as I thought it was going to be. The launching of R-33 can be done in inertial navigation mode in order to destroy targets at extreme range. Four R-60MK short-range missiles and two Biznovat R-40 TD-1 medium-range missiles are also on board. I'm, I'm going to look at its service record after this, I think, real quick. The MiG-31 aircraft has a six-barrel 30mm internal gun. It's a big GHS gun. GHS-6-23M mounted above the starboard main landing gear bay. That's a big the gun. The cannon has an ammunition capacity of 800 rounds and can fire at a rate of nearly 10,000 shots per minute. Whew. The AA-12 Adder missile and numerous Russian air-to-ground missiles, AGMs, such as the AS-17 Krypton anti-radiation missile, can be carried by the MiG-31 BM. Variant. Mm. On top of that, MiG-31 is designed to take out huge, fast targets like the SR-71 Blackbird, B-1 Lancer Bomber, and B-52 Strato. Wow, he's actually able to do that. Okay, I'm a bit, I'm a bit more perked up here now. Fortress. Presently, the MiG-31 is considered the standard long-range interceptor of the Russian Air Force and is expected to be active until the 2030s. I'm just not as impressed as I thought it was going to be. The MiG-31 was also chosen as the primary carrier aircraft for the Kinzhal hypersonic missile. Interesting. I don't know much about missiles, to be honest with you. They look cool, though. <laughs> A midlife upgrade of the MiG-31 is currently being procured, and this modification will integrate a number of new strike weapons into the MiG-31 and modernize most of its systems. Lastly, let's take a look at the operational history of okay, the MiG-31. Okay, here we go. I was going to Google this, but give me some info. The main operator of MiG-31s is the Soviet Union Air Force. <clears throat> okay. In 1981, the Soviet Air Defense Forces, PVO, deployed the MiG-31 in combat. So, 1981. You're talking over 40 year old, this aircraft now. 43 years old this thing is now. More than a decade later, in 1992, Russia offered the MiG-31 to Finland as part of a new fighter selection program. But the That didn't work out. Finland ended up joining NATO. <laughs> offer was not accepted because Russia had already presented the MiG-29. Mm. Finland declined the offer and instead recruited a fresh fighter from a selection program. On the other side, Syria ordered eight MiG-31E aircraft for its air force in 2007. Interesting. The order was apparently delayed in May 2009 due to Israeli pressure or a shortage of Syrian cash. Six MiG-31s were reportedly supplied to the Syrian Arab Air Force on August 15, 2005, according to Turkish news outlets. But right. Russia denied making MiG-31 aircraft for Syria. Anyways, that's all for today. Thanks for watching and see you in the next episode. Decent video. I'll leave a link into the description if you want to see that. But I'm going to quickly just check out if there's anything on what it's actually done. Let's have a look. Ooh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Operational history. Let's pull this up real quick. Let's have a look. Um... In early morning, 2023, a something missile. Oh, a cheeky picture there. 
was intercepted by the Patriot Air Defense System, according to the commander of the Ukraine Air Force. The missile was fired from a MiG-31K. MiG-31K in Russian airspace. Ukraine confirmed the inception, saying that it used the Patriot missile system protecting Kiev region. Interesting. Basically, a lot of that stuff. Um, it's been used, so it is being used against Ukraine. Then it is being used against Ukraine. Um, we've got some variants here. Where's the K? Because this looks like it's the. Would I say the newest one? Modified MiG thirty one BM variant able to carry a hypersonic missile. Uh, ten aircrafts were modified in May twenty eighteen. This modification. And we've removed APU for air-to-air -air missiles. The aircraft gained a sole role of an attack aircraft. It's in Kazakhstan, Russia, and that's it. And potentially Syria, I guess. I don't know. I'm not. I'm just not as impressed as I thought I was going to be. If I'm honest with you, I I genuinely thought I was going to be incredibly impressed. I'm I'm just not that impressed. Is there anything, anything about the future? Upgrades and replacements. Um, I guess not. I don't know. Let me know what you think, chat. Am I off by saying that? Is my, my theory off about it? I just, I don't see, I don't see it being as good as I thought it was. I really don't. Which is a shame, really, isn't it? Well, it's not being part of the Western um, fighters. Just Googling one last thing. No, I'm not getting anything from it, are No. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm just not that... I'm not as impressed as I thought I was going to be. And I want to know if that's their main fighter right now. Because that doesn't come anywhere near a Euro fighter by the looks of it. Even if you type in MiG-31 versus a uh, Euro fighter, do we have like... Oh, this is cool. And let's let's zoom in a little bit here. Mind the ads. I'll put my head up here. A um, little bit newer, the Eurofighter. Can't go as fast. Hasn't got as much uh, surface ceiling. The weight is nearly half. Oh my god, the Eurofighter is nearly half. Wow. Um, range, blah, blah, blah. Any other service records here? That's it. I guess it wasn't that good of a website. Um, yeah, I just, I don't know. Not impressed. Not impressed, chat. Let me know what you think. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. We're nearly there. Half a million. Let's do it. Let's get to it. Let's party. Let's have some fun. Until next time. I love you all. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.